one of the last stops was called the pig place this is probably called the cow place <laughs> nice spot Jan it is when the wind dies down yeah, when the wind yeah and I'm just hoping the cows don't come here ah uh, they do if I remember rightly they do come out a sniff they can sniff all they like but I am not opening a window or <laughs> a side hatch there's a couple down there They're very inquisitive cows, that's the thing. Yes, how close, John? A herd of wildebeest going majestically across the... Oh. <laughs> Uh, I think he's doing uh, number one. Oh, she, sorry. They're all she's, aren't they? I don't know. Yeah, no, they've all got udders. They're milkers. Be interesting to get woken up in the morning. They're obviously used to it anyway. Oh. Why am I getting the theme to the da 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 da? I'm expecting a couple of cowboys to come out the corner. Oh, fight, 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 fight. And well, if you want to know how close they are to the boat, here's, here we are. And here they are. It's the ones that just stand and stare at you. Good morning, everybody. Well, hold on, let's put these on. I can see what I'm doing then. Oh, there you are. All right. Yes, our friends are still here in the field. <laughs> Didn't disturb us through the night. Uh, amazed how quickly they can chomp through some grass whoa but yes we're gonna leave and uh, not sure how far we're gonna get because it is actually the afternoon this morning we were deluged with rain so didn't fancy going out in that but uh, yeah we're not gonna go far just about a couple of miles down to Lower Hayford I think First of two locks today. That's if we get as far as we're gonna go. We might have to do some more locks. The usual is there a more in space. <laughs> this is Hayford Common Lock. It's very common. And we've had pigs, we've had cows, and now we've got horses.
Thank you. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anybody on. Well, he's sitting there, but. Well, here we are at Alan's Lock. Alan's not here, so we'll have to do it instead. Uh, I don't know if you can see this flag behind me, but this is a uh, Canal Magazine online. Free. Ooh, we like things that are free. Man's just going to give me a card, so I'll put a link down there. Hello. This is Jerry. Say hello. Hi, uh, there you hello, go. people. Jerry from Canals Online Magazine. UK. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. <laughs> so have a butchers. There's some great stuff on there. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, God bless everybody who keeps it together. We somewhere uh, to send photographs to. You like photographs, yes. presumably, yeah. Yeah, photographs will do. Yep. That's fine. Brilliant. That's fine. And the overgrown Oxford continues. There's some nice moorings here if you could get in. And then the opposite side hasn't been dredged for quite a while, I wouldn't have thought. Single track down here. This is Lower Hayford, it's a bit windy. Apologies if it's windy noise, I have got my muffler on. I was going to say muff then. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's on. Yeah, there's a higher boat base here. Or a higher base even and the railway station opposite. Another tree across the canal. It's passable with care. That is really bad. really bad because the levels are low you are touching the bottom and I'm guessing it's silt or whatever else is down there not good at all as you can probably see this part of the South Oxford canal is very overgrown to the point where I can't even see where the towpath is if there is even the towpath behind there. Uh, the other side has got weeds and all sorts of bushes and brambles and nettles growing on it. I don't think it's been looked after for a few years, to be honest. I'm guessing this is all the backlog from COVID. When CRT are going to come out and clear all this, I have no idea because A, it means you are limited to mooring only at designated mooring spots, i.e. the most popular ones, which are going to get busy in the summer. Um, and it also means that boat movement is going to be very restricted. As you've seen already, there's two trees that have come down and despite 
and them being told that they're where they are, they still haven't been cleared. I know it's not always fashionable to um, do a bit of CRT bashing, but you know, sometimes I think they just have their priorities mixed up a little bit. If you don't regularly cut back any of this stuff, that means you're gonna have a hell of a big job to do come end of summer or whenever it is they decide to do it. That's presumably gonna cost more money than regular cuts. playing dodgems here. Thank you. to Enslow. There are some moorings here. I don't think we're going to moor and there's a pub. Of course there's a pub. What you probably can't see behind there is the River Cherwell and just below this lock the River Cherwell joins the Oxford Canal. In fact it becomes the River Cherwell. You're on the river for a while and of course as you are going on the river section there's the usual warning signs to tell you just in case. We're on green, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. There we go, we can actually check the sign. The sign's here. Block 40. Do not proceed, proceed with caution. Rising water levels, falling water levels, conditions normal. I think we're on green. Are we on green? Yes. There we go, we're on green. Marvellous. Going down. Onto the river. Here we are on the river then. River Cherwell comes in from the right. Under this bridge. Yeah, no. Sharp bend. It 
it's uh, bendy it's bendy I'll give you that lots of turns in it but the beauty is they're reasonably wide because we're on a river so if you meet somebody coming the other way it should be too much of a problem because you're on a river as well you can open up the throttle a little bit which means your steering is slightly more responsive although we're only just above a thousand rpm here is a case in point see two boats can pass quite easily the difference I've just turned the speed up to 1100 rpm she's doing really well the boat that is not Jan obviously Jan's not doing at all well because I haven't had a cup of tea yet but we will be stopping shortly and having lunch but yeah the boat's doing really well I've, I'm getting, getting the impression that this is sort of Thames cruising speed I think so it's a good bit of practice. So we're going to be slowing down now because we're going past more boats and we've got a lock. So we're coming to another one of those peculiarities, peculiar, I can't really say the word now, peculiarities of the Oxford Canal, which is the diamond shaped lock or lozenge shaped lock. You can actually get three boats in here again. Oh, by the way, the River Cherwell heads off in that direction. The whole reason for making these locks slightly larger than normal and an odd shape is so that they can let more water down. If this was just a normal size lock, there wouldn't be a lot of water going. Whereas with this, you can get more water in the lock. So when you open it up and send it out onto the canal, you get a bit more water. Stealing it. Notice the balance beams are at 90 degrees. Supposedly to make it easier to open and close. Is it easy? No. Back on the windy Oxford Canal again. It was a short bit of river, but there you go. Very nice. Didn't last long. Now, heading for Thrup. It's quite a busy place, Thrup. It's like Fradley Junction. There are some moorings there, but very popular and very busy hopefully because it's midweek it shouldn't be too bad but there you go you can never tell 
there are services at Thrup, but they're all before the main moorings, so whilst you can turn in the 90 degree turn and you've got a lift bridge, which I think is electrically operated and stops the road, which you don't particularly want to do, uh, and then you've got to look to see if you can find a mooring. So I don't know whether we're going to use the services first and then moor up, or moor up and then reverse back to the services. Who knows? We'll see when we get there. Services on the right here. I think you might be opening it. Huh? I'll be very surprised. Right, well, we made it to, where are we? Thrup. Thrup, yes. Well, I nearly said Tring then. Tring. Tring. <laughs> Tring. Yeah, wrong place. I know. It's miles away. <laughs> it's very popular here, mooring wise, that is. Um, and there is the Thrup Cruising Club. You can contact them because they've got a number of their own moorings during the summer because their members, people that moor here all the time, go off during the summer. And so they let out their, so they let out their then, little spaces yeah. um, for anybody to use. So give them a call beforehand or send them an email. We'll pop some details down below. Seven, in, seven days, isn't it? I think, yeah, some of them. Seven like that. days. Yeah. There's, there's obviously the free moorings, which is what we're on, the 48 hours and the seven day moorings. But they've got extra moorings just in case, especially in the summer, it gets very busy here and you can't get in at all. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this particular vlog, don't forget to thumbs up for a like. So. Oh, <laughs> just a thumbs up will do then. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what comes next. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you've enjoyed this vlog, thumbs up for a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It's yep. totally free to do so. And when you've done that, find the bell icon and click that. Tring! No, ting! <laughs> See? <laughs> Pillock. <laughs> She's forgotten her own catchphrase oh, now. Daft ding! <laughs> And obviously oh. YouTube will notify you next time we upload a vlog. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed, next time you see us, we'll be on that tidal, well not the tidal Thames, but Ooh. we'll be on the Thames. Ooh, rivers, rivers. Watch and this more rivers. space. So we'll catch up with us next time. In the meantime, stay safe everybody. Happy cruising. Bye for now. Bye.